Welcome back to Every Other Carl. I'm Carl. This is a workshop video, and today I'm going to show you how to make this gravel pad for a shed. The first thing to consider when building your pad is location. Ideally, your location will be level or nearly level. This is my chosen location. It has a slight slope, dropping roughly 9 inches over 12 feet. Not perfectly level, but this is solid ground, and a 9 inch drop is workable. Once you have your location, you'll need to determine the size of your pad. I'll provide more thoughts on that later, but my pad is 12 feet by 18 feet in order to fit a 10 foot by 16 foot shed. I marked out my location and purchased the wood beams for the perimeter. I'm using pressure treated ground contact rated 4x6 and 4x4 beams from Home Depot. I needed to do a little site prep before starting the pad since I had some dead branches overhanging my site. With everything ready, it was time to break ground. As I said, the shed I'm building is going to be 10 feet by 16 feet. In order to accommodate that size of shed, you need to oversize the pad by roughly a foot all the way around. Hence, a 12 foot by 18 foot pad. With a 12 foot by 18 foot pad, I get a full 8 to 12 inches of perimeter gravel all the way around the shed. That is essential for good drainage. Speaking of gravel, you're going to want 4 inches deep of what's called 3 quarter clean gravel. 3 quarter clean has jagged edges that, when compacted, create a strong base but still allow for drainage. Something like Riverstone, which has smooth edges, will constantly shift and provide poor support for your building. Something finer, like Crusher Run, will compact too tightly and won't allow water to drain through. I dug down 4 inches at the front of the pad, the highest point of the slope. I then worked on digging trenches for the 12 feet of 4x6 beams that would make up the sides of the pad, and then the trench for the 18 feet of 4x6 that would make up the back of the pad. Before you start building your pad, check your local building codes. You may need a permit. My town only requires a permit if the shed is going to be larger than 200 square feet or more than 22 feet tall. My shed will be well below this size, so I don't need a permit as long as I follow regulations as to where the shed could be placed on my property. With all that homework done, I started constructing the perimeter of the pad. For the back wall, I used two 10-foot beams and two 8-foot beams stacked and set into the dirt about 4 to 5 inches. For the sides, I used a 12-foot beam with an 8-foot beam below it at the low end of the pitch. Alright, I got this 12-foot side to be nice and level. And uh, so it's a 12-foot 4x6 on top and an 8-foot 4x6 underneath. That bottom part was really hard to dig coming over here. And now this is perfectly square, this corner right here. So I'm going to drill right through here for a piece of rebar. That's going to mark my starting point for all the other angles. I'm using half inch rebar in two foot lengths in this pattern. Each red dot represents a piece of rebar. The three pieces of rebar in the middle of the back wall are actually four feet long for additional strength. I used a one foot long quarter inch drill bit to drill pilot holes through the lumber, then followed it up with a half inch bit. If I had a foot long half inch drill bit, it would have made life a little easier. The rebar joined the top and bottom pieces of lumber together, but any point where two top pieces of lumber butt up against each other, I joined them with lap joints by cutting six inch notches in each piece and screwing them together, then driving a piece of rebar through the joint into the ground. When planning for the lap joints, Remember that this will reduce the length of your overall beams by 6 inches. So if you want an 18 foot span, you'll need to start with 18 feet and 6 inches of material. I used 4 inch exterior screws that were rated for use with pressure treated lumber all the way around to ensure the top and bottom pieces of lumber would stay tied together. Then I used six inch lag screws to reinforce the butt joints and the corners.
Now it was time to start grading the dirt. The goal was to get a level 4 inch depth all the way across the pad. In order to check my grading, I tied a piece of rope to one corner of the frame and drew it across the other side. This gave a good visual of any high spots. Since I was building on a slope, I didn't have to remove much dirt. Instead, I had to dig out the front of the pad and move that dirt to the back of the pad. After digging, I did several passes with my tamper. This works fine, but if you can rent a compactor, that would be even better. Remember that you're building the foundation here. You want to take your time and make it as solid as possible. After the dirt was compacted, I added garden weed control fabric over the entire area and stapled it up the sides. This is essential for keeping your gravel from sinking and from keeping weeds from growing through your gravel while still allowing for drainage. All right, the dirt is compacted, frame is ready. I put the weed control fabric down. Next thing I need is gravel. Like I said earlier, I used one and a half yards of three quarter clean gravel. This came out to $120, not that expensive. Once the gravel was delivered, I had to spread it evenly and compact it. Compacting the gravel is incredibly important. I used my hand tamper again, but like I said earlier, renting a compactor is not a bad idea. Using a rake and a shovel, I spread the gravel into each corner and then checked for high spots by screwing a 2x4 into the sides of the frame and pushing it back and forth across the gravel. Once I completed my first compacting pass with the tamper, I used a 16 foot 4x4 that I would be using for the next part of this build to check for level and then tamped it all again. All right, the gravel pad is done. I'll give you one little final tour. I just finished tamping everything. Everything is nice and compacted. So let's take a look. All right, so I got the front flush with the ground. It's about a nine inch drop all the way to the bottom here. I have just about four inches of gravel in there. The rest underneath this section is filled dirt. Got all the corners reinforced with rebar. Um, the center of all these pieces of lumber back here is reinforced with rebar into the ground. Got a lap joint connecting those two top pieces. There is gardening fabric underneath all the gravel to uh, keep weeds out and to help with the water drainage. And I got one and a half yards, the three quarter clean gravel delivered and tamped in place. I used my long 16 foot pieces of four by four to check that everything was level and tamped it down real nice. So you can definitely do this project yourself. It's a big workout, but it's totally worth it. Uh, take your time on this part because this is the foundation. If you're gonna have a nice shed, you need to have a nice foundation. So get it nice and level, compacted, do it right. Stay tuned for the rest of the shed build. I'm gonna be putting out more videos. The next thing I'm building is the floor. I'm doing pressure treated two by sixes for floor joists on those four by four skids. Those are gonna be the skids underneath the floor joists. And then I'm gonna be building this 10 by 16 foot shed. So you don't wanna miss out. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.